Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Wardog Sec, and I'm back with another video for you guys. In today's video, we are going to continue on with the Junior Penetration Tester Learning Path and Try Hack Me. This is the introduction to web hacking area, and this is the command injection room. Learn about a vulnerability, allowing you to ex execute commands through a vulnerable app and its remediations. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Task one, introduction. What is command injection? In this room, we're going to be covering the web vulnerability that is command injection. Once we understand what this vulnerability is, we will then showcase its impact and the risk it imposes on an application. Then you're going to be able to put this knowledge into practice, namely how to discover the command injection vulnerability, how to test and exploit this vulnerability using payloads designed for different operating systems, how to prevent this vulnerability in an application. Lastly, you'll get to apply theory into practice learning in a practical at the end of the room. To begin with, let's first understand what command injection is. Command injection is the abuse of an application's behavior to execute commands on the operating system using the same privileges that the application on the device is running with. For example, achieving command injection on a web server running as a user named Joe will execute commands under the, this user Joe and therefore obtain any permissions that Joe has. Command injection is often known as remote code execution, RC, because of the ability to remotely execute code within an application. These vulnerabilities are often the most lucrative to an attacker because it means that the attacker can directly interact with the vulnerable system. For example, an attacker may read system or user files, data, and things of that nature. For example, being able to abuse an application to perform the command who am I to list what user account the application is running will be an example of command injection. Command injection was one of the 10 vulnerabilities reported by Contrast Securities App Sec Intelligence Report 2019, so check that out if you're interested. Moreover, the OWASP framework constantly proposes vulnerabilities of this nature as one of its uh, top 10 vulnerabilities of web application OWASP framework, so check that out. Read me, which we've just done. Now let's go to task number two here, discovering command injection. This vulnerability exists because applications often use functions and program languages such as PHP, Python, and Node.js to pass data to and to make system calls on the machine's operating system. For example, taking input from a field and searching for an entry into a file. Take this code snippet for an example. In this code snippet, the application takes data that a user enters in an input field named dollar sign title. To search a directory for a song title, let's break it down in a few simple steps here. And you have the everything um, outlined here. And let's see here. Step number one, the application stores MP3 files in a directory contained on the operating system. Step number two, the user inputs the song title they wish to search for. The application stores this input into the dollar sign title variable. There we have it here. The data within this dollar sign title variable is passed to the command grep to search a text file named song.txt for the entry of whatever the user wishes to search for. And then step number four, the output of the search of songtitle.txt will determine whether the application informs the user that the song exists or not. Now, this sort of information would typically be stored in a database. However, this is just an example of where an application takes input from a user to interact with the user's or the application's operating system. An attacker could abuse this application by injecting their own command for the application to execute rather than using grep to search for an entry in songtitle.txt. They could ask the application to read data from a more sensitive file. Abusing applications in this way can be possible no matter the program languages the application uses. As long as the application processes and executes it, it can result in command injection. For example, this code snippet below is an application written in Python. Note that you're not expected to understand the syntax behind these applications. However, for the sake of reason, I have outlined the steps of how this Python application works as well. Step number one, the Flask package is used to set up a web server. We have it here. A function that uses the subprocess package to execute a command on a device, step number two here, using subprocess, 
And step number three, we use a route in the web server that will execute whatever is provided. For example, to execute who am I, we'll need to visit the following website here. And there we have it. All right, let's answer some questions. What variable stores the user's input in the PHP code snippet in this task? And that was the dollar sign title, I believe. So let's go ahead and type that in there. What HTTP method is used to retrieve data submitted by a user in the PHP code snippet? And that was the get request. If I wanted to execute the ID command in the Python code snippet, what route would I need to visit? It says use ID, so that's going to be forward slash ID. There we go. And let's go ahead and continue on here to task number three, where we're going to be talking about exploiting command injection. Hey everybody, just a quick little blurb here. As you can see here, most people that view my channel are not subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps get me in the algorithm, help spread the good word out there, helps bring more people and increase our glorious community here. All right, I'm all about helping out others. I know what it's like to come up in cybersecurity or even try to get into cybersecurity and not knowing where to look. I'm just having this channel up so I can help out other people. All right, that's all I got. You can often determine whether or not command injection may occur by the behaviors of an application, as you will come to see in the practical session of this room. Applications that use user input to populate system commands with the data can often be combined in unintended behavior. For example, the shell operators, semicolon, ampersand, and double ampersand will combine two or more system commands and execute them both. If you are familiar with the concept, it is worth checking out the Linux Fundamentals module to learn more about this. So check that out if you're interested. Command injection can be detected in mostly one of two ways. Number one, blind command injection, and number two, verbose command injection. Well, what are those? Well, you can see the definitions here, blind. This type of injection is where there is no direct input from the application when testing payloads. You will have to investigate the behaviors of the application to determine whether or not your payload was successful. And then you got verbose. This type of injection is where there's direct feedback from the application once you have tested a payload. For example, running the who am I command to see what user application uh, is running under. The web application will output the username on the page directly. Detecting blind command injection. Blind command injection is when uh, command injection occurs. However, there is no input, no hour sorry, no output visible, so it is not immediately noticeable. For example, a command is executed, but the web application outputs to mess or no message. For this type of command injection, we will need to use payloads that will cause some time delay. For example, the ping and sleep commands are significant payloads to test with. Using ping as an example, the application will hang for X seconds in relation to how many pings you have specified. Another method of detecting blind, detecting blind command injection is by forcing some output. This can be done by using redirector or redirection operators such as the greater than sign. If you are unfamiliar with this, I recommend checking out the Linux Fundamentals module. For example, we can tell the web application to execute commands such as who am I and redirect that to a file. We can then use a command such as cat to read this newly created file's content. Testing command injection. This is often complicated and requires quite a bit of experimentation significantly as the syntax for commands varies between Linux and Windows. The curl command is a great way to test for command injection. This is because you are able to use curl to deliver data to and from an application in your payload. Take this code snippet below as an example. A simple curl payload to an application is possible for command injection. And here we have it. You got the curl. You have the um, command injection here where it says who am I. Detecting verbose command injection. Detecting command injection this way is arguably the easiest method of the two. Verbose command injection is when the application gives you feedback or output as to what is happening or being executed. For example, the output of commands such as ping or who am I is directly displayed on the web application. Useful payloads. I have compiled some valuable payloads 
for both Linux and Windows into the tables below. All right, so I'm just going to skim over a lot of this section here. Be sure to pause the video and read through it yourself or check out the room. All right, Linux payloads here. You got Who Am I? See what user the application is running under. You got LS, list of contents in the current directory. Or directory. You'll be able to find such files as configuration files, environmental file, files, tokens, and application keys, and many more valuable things. Ping. This command will invoke application to hang. This will be useful in testing an application for blind command injection. You got sleep and you got NC for netcat. Windows, same thing here, or similar thing here. Uh, you got who am I, right? See what application, uh, the, the uh, see what user the application is running under. You got dir, list the contents of the directory, ping, and then you got timeout. Answer the questions below. What payload would I use if I wanted to determine what user the application is running as? Well, we know that is going to be the who am I command. So who am I? There we go. What popular network tool would I use to test for blind command injection on a Linux machine? And as we saw up above here, that's going to be the uh, ping. So let's go ahead and do that. What payload would I use to test a Windows machine for blind command injection? Well, that's going to be timeout. All right. If we read through here, we can see that this command will also invoke the application hang. It is also useful for testing application for blind command injection if the ping command is not installed. So let's go ahead and continue on to task number four here. And we're going to talk about remediating command injection. Command injection can be prevented in a variety of ways. Everything from a minimal use of potentially dangerous functions or libraries in a programming language to filtering inputs without relying on a user's input. I have detailed these a bit further below. The examples below are of the PHP programming language. However, the same principles can be extended to many other languages. Vulnerable functions. In PHP, many functions interact with the operating system to execute commands via shell. These include exec, pass through, and system. Take this snippet below as an example. Here, the application will only accept and process numbers that are inputted into the form. This means that any command such as who am I will not be processed. See, see how it's showing the filtering of certain um, criteria here. Number one, the application will only accept a specific pattern of characters, digits zero to nine. The application will then only proceed to execute this data, which is all numerical. These functions take inputs such as a string or user data and will execute whatever is provided on the system. Any application that uses these functions without proper checks will be vulnerable to command injection. Input sanitization. Sanitizing any input from a user that an application uses is a great way to prevent command injection. This is a process of specifying the formats or types of data that a user can submit. For example, an input field that only accepts numerical data or removes any special characters such as the greater than, the ampersand, or, and, or and sign, and the forward slash. In the snippet below, filter underscore inputs PHP function is used to check whether or not any data submitted via an input form is a number or not. If it is not a number, it must be invalid input. There you have it here, filter input number, filter valid input number, all right, or validate number. Bypassing filters. Applications will employ numerous techniques in filtering and sanitizing data that is taken from a user's input. These filters will restrict you to specific payloads. However, we can abuse the logic behind an application to bypass these filters. For example, an application may strip out quotation marks. We can instead use the hexadecimal value of this to achieve the same result when executed. Although the data given will be in a different format than what is expected, it can still be interpreted and will have the same result. And there's the example of the payload here. What is the term for the process of cleaning user input that's provided to an application? Well, we saw above that was sanitization. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And let's continue on to task number five, which is practical command injection. I've already deployed the machine here. Deploy the machine, task is task. There will be a visible split screen once it's ready. Test some payloads on the application hosted on the website and split screen view to uh, test for command injection. Refer to this cheat sheet if you are stuck or wish to explore more complex payloads. Find the contents 
of the flag located in the home, chihackmeflag.txt. You can use a variety of payloads to achieve this. I, re I recommend trying multiple. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna go to show split screen here. And let's see what we can find out. Be sure to play around with this before coming back to the video and discovering the solution. All right, now we are going to get into the solution. All right, first thing you want to do is type in this example here, right, which is localhost the 127.0.0.1. You can see it's it's running a ping, but why is it pinging itself like that? That's kind of interesting, right? So if you go and check out the sheet sheet, or you can scroll back up above to task number three to how to exploit certain things in here, you can do some testing like, okay, you can try, like, who am I? Nothing's going to show up because something's getting filtered out, right? So if you type, go and type in who am I again, and maybe you could try the ampersand, see what it does. Oh, I'm WW data. All right, and I believe that was one of the um, answers to the questions below. Who is the application running as? And that's www uh, hyphen data. So go ahead and plug that in there. Well, now we already know that the ampersand is going to work. So it wants us to find this flag located in this um, directory here. So I'm just going to copy this information over. And you're going to use that same uh, bypass again, the ampersand. And you're going to type in uh, cat because you want to see what's in this uh, flag file, right? So you can do uh, cat and then the directory and then the, the um, name of the file at the end. So execute, and there you go for the last um, flag here. Now you can play around with this as well. I'm sure you can. Let's just try. Let's do a cat, and then uh, let's do Etsy pass WD. Oh, wow, it actually worked. Okay. Well, <laughs> there you go. You can also do. Pa uh, let's try it with. Uh, Shadow. Let's see if this works. No. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot, right? But as you can see here, you can deal with the uh, past WD, so you at least get the whatever names of the registered users are in here. So let's go ahead and type this flag in and close out this video. Okay, you also notice that the semicolon works. As you can see here, who am I? Right? Now I'll try it again. Who am I with the semicolon? There you go. You can try all kinds of commands in here. Like I said, play around with it, familiarize yourself with it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just one little tidbit here. Let's try this LS home. Try hack me, Ubuntu. There you go. And let's see here. Conclusion, well done for making it to the end of this room. To recap, we've learned about the following elements of command injection, how to discover the command injection vulnerability, how to test and exploit this vulnerability using payloads designed for different operating systems, how to prevent this vulnerability in an application, applying your learning by performing command injection in a practical application. As you will have probably discovered, there are multiple payloads that can be used to achieve the same goal. I highly encourage you to go back to the practical element of this task and try uh, some alternative methods of retrieving the flag. So be sure to test those out, see how many you could find how many bypasses you can find in order to um, exploit this particular system. Terminate the machine, which we'll do after this shortly. Now, hopefully you all had had enjoyed this video, got some type of valuable information. If you did and you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Comment below in the thoughts and opinions. Share the video. All that good stuff. As always, thank you all for watching. Have a good day, and I will see you later.